Africa's rainforests have traditionally protected the continent from the harsh realities of nature. Much of our planet's supply of nitrogen and oxygen come from these forests. The balance of nature is crucial, but we violate it almost casually. Yet, a great number of these irreplaceable forests are now ravaged. This is shea butter tree. It's in high demand because of its weight. It uh, doesn't spark. There's no, when you put fire, it just burns and it gives less uh, uh, ashes. That is why we use uh, shea butter. In many places, lumber companies are destroying virgin forests for pure personal financial reasons. The impact of climate change is the least of their concerns. Profit is. 800 bags of charcoal of 32 kg per container. And I've done about 25 containers in one year. That probably estimates to um, maybe about uh, five, six thousand trees. It's a big market. You go, even if you go on the uh, internet, Alibaba, it's all, they're everywhere. Not only in Nigeria. They have in Ghana, they have in Botswana, South Africa, everywhere. You know, that they allow us to do it. It is as if Africa is faced with a wicked irony. The forests are disappearing as fast as the continent's major water sources are shrinking. Lake Chad was once one of the world's great lakes. Covering an estimated 25,000 square kilometers and bordering Nigeria, Chad, Cameroon, as well as the Republic of Niger. More than 30 million people depend on it for livelihood and sustenance. Any threat to the lake is a threat to the livelihoods of these 30 million people. Climate change and overuse have put one of Africa's mightiest lakes in mortal danger. In the past 40 years alone, the lake has shrunk from 25,000 square kilometers to under 1,500 square kilometers. It is almost like a football field becoming the size of a football. The first factor is the rainfall. Since the early 1970s, it has been observed that in different times, within the basin, there has been a dry period. The second factor is the huge population growth. The population growth rate makes the need for water to increment. Water once used to be more available. The livelihood of all the people is affected. On Kinasarum Island, where the lake is crucial for survival, fishermen, who once made routine massive catches over the years, now thank their stars when they haul out half-filled buckets of tiny fish. Fish production in Lake Chad has fallen 60%. When the water level was very good, Lake Chad was enough to support my family. I have a family of 16 children 
and with annual revenue of 1.7 to 1.8 million sefa franc. I had no problem maintaining my family for not less than eight months per year. But now the water level is drastically reduced. The annual revenue generated is no more than 600,000 sefa franc. Reeds and floating vegetation are everywhere on the lake, choking the water. A well is now sunk and children now play where the lake used to be. Indeed, this island of 6,000 people was not always this size. It has gotten bigger as Lake Chad has shrunk. The sand dune is overflowing towards the lake area as the desert continues to expand inch by inch. Africa does not produce any significant amount of greenhouse gases, but its lakes and rivers are drying up, aggravating food insecurity and health problems. Regarding actions which have been taken by the countries of Lake Chad Basin, there is a study that's going on now, feasibility study on the possibility of transferring some quantity of water from Ubangi River, which is a tributary of the Congo Basin. Here, the water is not drying up or disappearing, but climate change manifests in sea level rise and devastating coastal erosions. If you want to know the future of many coastal cities in West Africa, go to Keta, a community in the Volta region of Ghana. Keta was an important trading post between the 14th and late 20th centuries. The area is very busy because the people depend so much on the sea and the lagoon for their livelihood. Keta is a coastal community. They rely much on fisheries, both in the lagoon and the near shore environment, and also farming using the, the water underground water and even the water from the the Keta Lagoon okay for their their activities and thirdly okay, seasonally they also go into salt production the inhabitants of Keta remember when the beach was two miles away into the sea the first sea defense system built many years ago has long been swallowed by the encroaching sea. The rising sea level and frequent waves are a threat to the fishermen who are entirely dependent on the water. My family size is about 11. Eight children and two wives, including myself. Sometimes it happens that when we go to the sea and try to catch fish, the sea is not good. The sea is rough and we have to return as we have done today. There are about 400 fishermen in this community and they are all facing the same problem. The amount of fish stock in the sea is decreasing and the tidal surge is continuing. So their canoes, which were once very busy on the sea, now stand idle on the shore.
Today, Keta is mercilessly battered by strong waves and a sea level rise, which have displaced over 30,000 people in 12 communities. A large portion of residential buildings and public infrastructure, including the road linking Keta to its northern neighbours, have been lost to the sea. This fort was put out by the Danish Norwegians in 1784. And because this place is nearer to Togo and Benin, greater number of slaves were purchased from Togo, Benin, and they were kept over here. So the sea destroyed a lot of buildings, monumental buildings and private houses. We have the AME Zion schools, which were first to be destroyed. We have the Bremen Mission, a lot of post office, hospital, all those things gone to the sea. There is a god of land who doesn't want a corpse. Anytime dead bodies are carried across the land, the sea gets angry, the gods get angry. So that's when you see the sea very, very rough. When we've come to the conclusion that yes, Ghana is uh, vulnerable to that. So after these studies, what we're doing to sensitize people to let them know that yes, uh, we are not immune, we need to prepare ourselves, the populace, uh, by educating journalists, policy makers, and so on. As an engineering solution to stop the erosion, a new sea defense project, which was started in the year 2000, was completed in 2004. But this is a temporary solution. The frequent floods from the turbulent sea has put pressure on the people to abandon their village. Some are staying here and shifting their occupation from fishing 